Hello guys, welcome to another session of RBI 24/7. My name is Mansi Anand, and guys, as you know that in this session we discuss a set of five questions that can be of use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams. And let's not waste time and move straight away to question number one. But before doing that, guys, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel. So just so just just ne abhi tak subscribe nahi kiya hai ya fir aap first time hamari video dekh rahe ho, then do not forget to hit this red button. And apart from that, you can also press this bell icon, which will help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up. Uske alawa, you can also join our Telegram group. On this group. You can post all your doubts and queries, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So, moving ahead to question number one. So, here is your question number one. Okay, this question talks about fiscal deficit. So, basically, it gives you three statements. You have to read them carefully, and you have to tell that which of the following are correct about the topic of fiscal deficit. Fiscal deficit, as per Kafi news, may have because the budget is approaching. So let's see how many of you can answer this question correctly. And the correct option for this question is option D. Option D means one and three. That means uh, statement one is correct, statement three is correct, but statement two it is not correct. Guys, I think uh, fiscal deficit is a term. फिजिकल डेफिसिट इज अ टर्म जिसका मीनिंग बहुत सारे लोगों को पता होगा मोस्ट ऑफ यू वुड बी नोइंग दैट व्हाट डस फिजिकल डेफिसिट मींस इन सिंपल सेंस इट इज द एक्सेस इट इज द एक्सेस ऑफ योर एक्सपेंडिचर ओवर योर इनकम लेट्स से आपकी मंथली इनकम जो है वो ₹50000 है बट आपके खर्चे जो है वो ₹60000 है सो डू यू सी द डिफरेंस ये जो 10000 है आप कहां से लाओगे या तो मम्मी पापा से मांगोगे या फिर किसी फ्रेंड से बोरो करोगे इन केस योर इन केस योर पेरेंट्स रिफ्यूज टू गिव यू मनी राइट सो देयर इज अ डिफरेंस ऑफ 10000 बिटवीन योर इनकम एंड योर एक्सपेंडिचर एंड दिस इज नोन एज फिजिकल डेफिसिट राइट and whenever there is a fiscal deficit whenever your expenditures are exceeding your income then you have to arrange for it jaisa ki maine aapko bola ki agar aapke kharche zyada hai aur earning kam hai then what are you going to do you can ask for you can ask you can go to your parents and ask for money but then they are going to ask you ke paise kahan kharch kar diye to unko batana padega about all those movies and about uh, all those uh, dinner dates with friends that you had at expensive restaurants right But you don't want to tell them. If you don't want to tell them, then you will have to go to your friends. Or those को वो बोलना पड़ेगा कि I have spent a lot of money on you and now it's your time to help me. So lend me rupees ten thousand, right? So the, similarly, see, just as you are trying to cover your uh, expenses, just as you are trying to cover the difference, this difference, government also tries to do that. Just imagine. government which is handling such a vast country like india obviously they have to make certain expenditures and they have certain incomes but when their expenditures exceed their income they have to suffer through a situation which is called fiscal deficit right हम गवर्नमेंट को बोलते तो रहते कि सरकार लोगों पर खर्चा नहीं करती गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट बिल्डिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट डूइंग दिस नॉट गिविंग सब्सिडीज बट द पॉइंट इज दे कैन मेक दिस एक्सपेंडिचर According to the constraints of their income, अगर income ही नहीं है उनके पास तो वो खर्चा कैसे करेंगे Just as you don't have the income of ten thousand to cover this deficit, and for this you resort to borrowing from your friends. Similarly, when government has such a situation, they also have to resort to borrowing. Government किससे borrow करेगी? या तो they can issue bonds and borrow money from public. or they can borrow from certain other countries right or they can bo uh, borrow from multilateral organizations usually uh, government issues bonds in order to cover such deficit in order to raise money from people which they can use for covering up their expenditure right so this is the basic concept of fiscal deficit now coming to the statements here you can see first statement to bahut simple hai which says It is a shortfall in a government's income compared with its spending. So it's correct. Coming to the third state, sorry, coming to the second statement, it says a fiscal deficit is equivalent to fiscal debt. This is not true because debt is the total amount.
amount of um, credit that a government is having. Basically, kitna karza hai ek sarkar ke paas that is known as debt. Right? So, the total amount of uh, credit that they have taken from the market that is known as debt. Now, what debt kisi bhi form mein ho sakta hai, wo kisi bhi uh, party se liya ho, ho sakta hai. See, deficit is the difference. Let's say, here you are having a fiscal deficit of 10,000. You go to borrow money from your friend and you say that bhai, itne paiso ki zarurat hai and 10,000, uh, I need rupees 10,000. And now you honor your friendship and lend me rupees 10,000. But your friend says, Ki tune mujhe pehle bhi bhoat paise liye hoa hai. I have already lent you a lot of money. That is why this is very risky to give you 10,000 more. Let's say you have already taken 20,000 from your friend. So 20,000 which is already the debt you have taken and 10,000 you need more. So your total debt will be equal to 30,000. Right? Same goes in, in the case of government. So debt kya hai? The total karza they have, the total loan they have. But deficit is the difference between income and expenditure. So your deficit currently is 10,000. But your debt, when you take this money from your friend, the total debt is going to be 30,000. Right? I hope you are clear with this. That is why deficit and fiscal deficit and fiscal debt, they are two different statements. Now coming to the third statement, which says high fiscal deficit is not always seen as bad for the economy. This is also a correct statement. And why is this so? Okay, high fiscal deficit makes it very riskier for the countries. Makes it riskier for the countries. Because see, the more debt you have, the more, sorry, the more deficit you have, the more money you would have to raise. Aapki income, jitni zada kam hogi aapke kharcho se, aapko utna zada money raise karna padega, utna zada uh, borrowing karni padegi apne friends se. Right? So the point is, obviously it's a very risky venture. It is quite risky and for an economy, it's not very good to have a high fiscal deficit uh, number. But the point is, countries such as India, basically developing countries or the emerging economies, they need to spend a lot in their countries in order to uh, make the countries grow faster. See, if government will not borrow from many sources, then they are not going to have money in order to develop. Right? So let's say there is a country which is really poor. So obviously in a poor country, taxes are not going to be very high. Government would not be able to co uh, collect a lot of taxes and they will not have the money for spending upon government for, uh, so, uh, sorry, spending upon public or building infrastructure. Right? So basically, in order to make the country grow, government will have to spend first and then when they build infrastructure, when they build some public schools, children are going to have good education, they are going to, uh, they are going to get good jobs, they are going to build good businesses, run good businesses, right? And similarly, if government builds good hospitals, then people are going to be healthy and uh, they, will be, they will be working more efficiently and raising money in the country, earning income in the country. So if governments want their country to grow, they initially have to spend money and if they will not borrow, then they will not be able to grow, right? That is why high fiscal deficit is not always considered as bad because it allows the economy to grow provided the government is spending it on productive things so, this money is spent on a productive thing, which will generate more income in the future. Just as I told you, building, uh, uh, building public schools and public hospitals, that will make your coming generation educated, skilled and healthy, who can work efficiently for the country. Right? That is why not seen as a, uh, not always seen as bad. And also, in, a, in an economy which is uh, recession hit, or where there is a crisis, there is high fiscal deficit because governments um, so that government is able to spend money in order to trigger the economy or kick start the economy right okay here you can see some more details about fiscal deficit the difference between expenditure and revenue condition arises when government the expenditure is more than the expenditure sorry income in revenue in the current year Fiscal deficit occurs due to events like a major rise in capital expenditure. Let's say government has to build some uh, some huge project or a, a construction of a dam, construction 
of a building or con sorry construction of a smart city all these things require money serves as an indicator how well the government is managing its finances situation of fiscal deficit prompts government to indulge in welfare activities if they have money if they have borrowings they can indulge into welfare activities without having to collect a lot of taxes right i hope you understand this this these all points have these all these points have been discussed moving ahead okay this is your second question and this question says which of the following is correct in context of inflation in the economy the correct option for this question is option a option a means the degree of impact on inflation is dependent upon the quality of public expenditure right so first of all let's try to uh, have a look at other statements and then try to refute them and then derive that which one is correct see right so the second statement says degree of public expenditure does not impact the degree of inflation in the economy this is not right because i just told you the more money the more uh, money government spends in the economy there would be more growth and with growth there is going to be a higher degree of inflation why is this so because let's say government is building a smart city project right when if when you build that smart city you are going to provide jobs to people uh, in the construction sector in the technology sector and many more right so you are providing jobs to people when government uh, indulges into such pro uh, projects it transfers money to people by providing them jobs and when people have good jobs they earn money they spend a lot more and when they spend a lot more they demand a lot more then there is inflation in the economy so basically degree of public expenditure obviously affects degree of inflation that is why the statement is not correct moving to the statement c here you can see more the inflation in the economy the more would be the need for public expenditure this is also not right because see ye keh rahe hain ki jitna zyada inflation hai economy mein utna zyada sarkar ko kharcha karna padega this is obviously not right because see if there is already a high inflation in the market and government spends more money then they are going to add to that inflation so in order to control the the inflation government needs to lessen or lower their public expenditure the d statement statement d says the more the degree of public expenditure the lesser will be inflation we just discuss here ki jitna zyada public expenditure hai inflation badhega कम नहीं होगा सो दैट इज वाई दिस इज ऑल्सो नॉट करेक्ट ओके द स्टेटमेंट ई स्टेटमेंट इज फिजिकल डेफिसिट इज द वन फैक्टर दैट डज नॉट हैव एनी इम्पैक्ट ऑन द डिग्री ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन इन द इकोनॉमी दिस इज ऑल्सो नॉट करेक्ट बिकॉज सी वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट फिजिकल डेफिसिट हेयर फिजिकल डेफिसिट मीन्स यू जस्ट हैव टू अप्लाई अ चेन ऑफ इवेंट्स हेयर फिजिकल डेफिसिट मीन बोरोइंग राइट आपका फिजिकल डेफिसिट दस हजार था तो आपने दस हजार बोरो किया था दोस्त से सो फिजिकल डेफिसिट जितना डिफरेंस है सरकार के खर्चों में और इनकम में दे आर गोइंग टू बोरो दैट मनी एंड इफ दे बोरो दैट मनी दैट मीन्स दैट मनी दैट मनी हैज ऑलरेडी बीन स्पेंड और दे प्लान टू स्पेंड इन इन फ्यूचर सो इफ दे आर गोइंग टू स्पेंड मनी देन ऑब्वियसली द डिग्री ऑफ इन्फ्लेशन इज गोइंग टू राइज right so jitna zyada deficit hoga that means they are spending more and since they are spending more the degree of inflation would be high that is why all these four statements are not correct now coming to the correct statement this statement statement a it says that degree of impact on inflation is dependent upon the quality of public expenditure see guys what i want to tell you here is कि अगर पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर है सरकार खर्चा कर रही है देन ऑब्वियसली इट इज गोइंग टू लीड टू एन इंक्रीज इन इन्फ्लेशन बट हाउ मच वुड बी द इंक्रीज इन इन्फ्लेशन दैट इज गोइंग टू डिपेंड अपॉन द क्वालिटी ऑफ पब्लिक एक्सपेंडिचर आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू इफ गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट स्पेंड्स मनी ऑन प्रोडक्टिव एवेन्यूज लाइक बिल्डिंग पब्लिक पब्लिक हॉस्पिटल प्रोवाइडिंग एजुकेशन टू पीपल प्रोवाइडिंग स्किल बिल्डिंग टू पीपल देन द इन्फ्लेशन is not going to be more because see obviously thoda sa inflation badhega but wo bahut zyada nahi badhega why because see government is supplying money into the market and if people's income level rises right if you are putting the money at correct avenues 
that means you are going to raise the income levels of public and if income le income levels rise then you are also going to raise the demand right so government in the form of public expenditure increase the supply of money in the market with the supply if it ends up in some productive sectors then it is going to raise the income level of people and if income level is raised then it is going to raise the demand also that means this demand is going to balance the supply of money that government initially made jo sarkar ne initially supply ki thi paiso ki ye jo badi hui demand hai ye usko counter kar degi right but if this money does not end up in productive sectors then what is going to happen this demand generation will not be more because there is supply of money by government but it is not getting into the hands of people that is why not raising the income and not raising the demand at the end right so demand bahut zyada nahi padegi agar productive sectors mein paisa nahi jata hai to aur wo supply ko bahut zyada counter nahi kar payegi leading to high inflation right so that is the whole story here that is why we are saying that quality of public expenditure is really important abhi currently yahi ho raha hai country mein that government rbi uh, has uh, has spent a lot of money they are trying to generate liquidity in the market but the point is if this liquidity does not go into the hands of public and that does not lead to demand generation then it is going to lead to really high inflation that can be uh, that can be harmful for the economy in the long run right so it is very important to look that where you are spending aisa nahi ke agar growth lani hai to kahin bhi kharcha kar do dekhna padega ki kahan kharcha kar rahe ho aur kahan nahi kar rahe ho right okay here you can see some more details fiscal deficit has the ability to boost a sluggish economy economy which is moving at a very low pace that can be kick started with the help of fiscal deficit but it can also lead to cost push inflation if it does not end up in productive sectors government being a major player in the market for borrowings usually if governments they borrow more in the form of fiscal deficit that puts pressure on interest rate sarkar jitna zyada borrow karegi obviously if they borrow more they have to offer higher interest rate on their securities on their bonds in order to attract the investors and these higher interest rate that can increase the cost production cost for manufacturers right because see jo bhi higher interest rate se production cost kaise badhegi because whenever the manufacturer whenever whenever any factory owner he wants to expand in that case he would have to take a loan and in case the interest rates are high the loan is going to be expensive and in turn the production cost will be high because loans will be loans will become expensive right so government borrowing can make production cost higher by increasing the interest rate right and obviously if the cost is high then products prices are going to be higher right this is one important point that, that is a that is a very interesting point that when it was great depression in 1930s economist john keynes he suggested that let's do one thing logo ko bolte hain kuhe khodo aur unko wapas bharo कुओं के साथ कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है इनिशियली देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम विद दी वेल्स बट कीन सजेस्टेड लेट्स आस्क पीपल टू डिग अप दी वेल्स एंड फिल देम अगेन एंड लेट्स आस्क देम टू डू दिस अगेन एंड अगेन व्हाई इज दिस सो बिकॉज सी द पॉइंट ऑन व्हिच कीन्स वांटेड टू एम्फसाइज इज ही वांटेड टू से दैट क्रिएट जॉब्स इवन इफ इट डज नॉट एंड अप क्रिएटिंग एनी एसेट सो इफ यू आर Uh, digging up the well and then filling it again then again digging up the well and then filling it again you're not going to create any additional asset but obviously there will be rotation of money because uh, people who will be hired to dig up the wells and fill them again they will they are going to get the money right if they get the money they are going to spend it somewhere and lead to demand generation for products kyunki agar jin logo ko salaries mili hai kuye khodne ke baad wo fir kahi kharcha karenge जब वो खर्चा करेंगे तो किसी और के लिए इनकम जनरेट करेंगे राइट सो दिस साइकिल गोज ऑन एंड ऑन दैट इज वाई सी वन मेजर फैक्टर दैट लेट टू दी लेट टू रिकवरी फ्रॉम ग्रेट डिप्रेशन वॉज वर्ल्ड वॉर्स बिकॉज वेन कंट्री स्टार्टेड 
producing for uh, producing arms producing weapons for world war they started raising money from the market and they started production when this production started it ultimately led to rotation of money in the market right so world war although a huge devastation to the entire world to countries but <coughs> uh, they are cited as a factor for recovery from the great depression so fiscal deficit due to productive investment will lead to demand generation by balancing the supply right i hope these two statements these two questions are clear to you they are interrelated okay coming to the next question it says rbi lacks regulatory powers to bring in the activities of digital lenders which of the following options can be a reason behind the above statement five reasons given to you you have to select the correct option that why rbi cannot control the activities of digital lenders or why it is difficult for them moving ahead to the correct option and the correct option for this question is option d option d means most of these lending apps are not registered as nbfcs but under money lending acts of various state governments see guys uh, i hope you remember the digital lending session that we had we discussed why are digital lenders important what are they doing and why is rbi getting strict on them because <coughs> i'm sorry although they provide loans at uh, loans to uh, loans to that section of the society which is not catered by traditional banks jin logo ko banks loan nahi dete hain kisi bhi reason ke chalte unko ye digital lenders loan de dete hain but when they come on to the recovery of the loan then they exploit uh, they they use exploitative practices they harass their borrowers in many ways that is why rbi is getting stricter but it is difficult for rbi to um, to control these lenders because they are not registered as nbfcs but they are registered under different state acts so it, it makes the whole project a uh, whole uh, controlling process really complicated because koi koi company kisi state ke act ke under registered hai koi koi company ho sakta hai uh, karnataka ke स्टेट एक्ट में रजिस्टर्ड है हो सकता है कोई पंजाब में रजिस्टर्ड है सो इट इज गोइंग टू बिकम रियली डिफिकल्ट टू सी हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम आर नॉट इन लीगल कंप्लायस और हाउ मेनी ऑफ देम आर वायलेटिंग दी लॉस दैट इज वाई ऑल दो देर वर्किंग वर्किंग एज एन बी एफ सीज बट दे आर नॉट रजिस्टर्ड एज एन बी एफ सीज दैट इज वाई इट इज डिफिकल्ट फॉर आर पी आई टू कंट्रोल देम एंड दैट इज वाई दे हैव सेट अप अ वर्किंग ग्रुप which can work upon this issue and they can devise a structure to control these lending apps right rbi said forming a working group on the aspects of digital lending by regulated and unregulated both type of players including mobile apps it has been asked to submit its report within 3 months see covid 19 mein in logo ka in digital lenders ka kaam aur bad gaya because people were facing financial difficulties and they wanted loans that is why they resorted to such apps under the vulnerable situations like covid 19 sorry okay here you can see the composition of the board and some other details about the board right so these two points refer to the composition of the board i think uh, you can read them on your own if you want you can take a screenshot of it okay moving on to next question question number 4 this question says what does it refer to here two statements that i tell you about a particular uh, a particular process or a particular thing you have to identify the correct correct option moving ahead to the correct option that is option e option e means reverse stress test see what is reverse stress test i think that could be uh, that would be more clear to you with the help of an of a diagram see <coughs> guys i hope you remember stress test we have discussed this in one of the previous session that what is stress testing basically um if any one of you see you guys are preparing for competitive exams so exam se pehle hum mock test dete hain ya mock interviews dete hain wo hum kyu karte hain to identify that what are our strengths and weak what are our strengths and weaknesses and what are the areas we need to work upon right so stress test is like a mock test for the banks they are looking that what if such a situation uh, happens what if a pandemic happens are we prepared enough to face such a situation what if a crisis happens what if there is hyperinflation 
right so they think of different scenarios which can put them in a difficult financial position and they try to figure out that whether they are prepared to fight uh, fight against it or not right so these are stress test stress test begin with capital they apply shock like covid 19 or some sort of depression and then they see what can be the anticipated loss in this particular situation and then they see that are they prepared do they have the capacity to absorb such issue such uh, crisis or not so this is a basic stress test now coming to the point of reverse stress test what is a reverse stress test see here you are going to start at the end here we are going to figure out that what is the point where the bank would go bankrupt end position kya hai kaun sa aisa point hai kaise kaun se aise capital levels hain jahan par jaakar बैंक जो है वो अनवायबल हो जाएगा या फिर वो टोटली बैंक हो जाएगा इन दी स्ट्रेस टेस्ट यू आर स्टार्टिंग अहेड विद करंट सिचुएशन इन विच प्रोबेबली यू आर फाइनेंशियली स्टेबल बट अंडर रिवर्स स्ट्रेस टेस्ट यू स्टार्ट विद सिचुएशन वेयर द बैंक इज ऑलरेडी बैंक राइट सो हेयर यू कैन सी बिगेन विद बैंक फेलियर देन मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ दी शॉक रिक्वायर देन ट्राई टू फिगर आउट दैट वट विल बी दी मैग्नीट्यूड वट विल बी दिग्री ऑफ द क्राइसिस दैट विल मेक द बैंक को बैंक राइट सी यू कैन सिंपली अप्लाई दिस टू दी एग्जाम एग्जाम्पल हेयर यू आर थिंकिंग दैट ओके आई एम गुड एट अ पर्टिक्युलर सब्जेक्ट एंड आई सी आई एम गुड एट कोड आई नीड टू वर्क एट रीजनिंग माई इंग्लिश इज फाइन बट आई नीड टू वर्क ऑन करंट अफेयर्स and then you would you are trying to figure out that agar main itna itna time in sabko de do then i am going to get a strategy that would help me to clear a particular exam but here you are trying to do the opposite here you are trying to figure out that what is the worst condition when you will fail right so fail karne ke liye kitne kam marks aane zaruri hain ya kya lower limit hai that will make you fail the exams you are beginning with that point and then you will see that okay what circumstances will lead to it that if i go uh, go to watch movie on every saturday then this can happen if i go to uh, if i go to hang out with my friends on every sunday then this can happen right so you are doing reverse engineering here starting from the end point starting from the uh, result and then going back to the situations this is what banks do begin with failure then magnitude of the shock required in order to make the, those banks bankrupt or fail or lead them to their failure and then figuring out possible scenarios and their probability that what are the events that can lead them to their failure and then they can identify the weakness see in this uh, exam wala example <coughs> you figured out that if you go to sat if you go to movies to every if you go to movies every saturday then you are going to fail then you can ident now you have identified one of your weakness that movies are your weakness and probably you can watch a movie in one month rather than going to movie every saturday right similarly banks try to figure out their weakness and how they can avoid this particular scenario which will make them fail right so this is reverse stress test guys right? if you have been reading the newspapers on a regular basis you must be knowing that rbi is trying to uh, RBI has recently released a financial stability report, but many experts, many economists are saying that we need to change the way we calculate these statistics in the report, or the way we do our stress testing. Because financial institutions are required to do stress testing, we need to change the way. So one point that is being cited is the reverse stress test. That this can be included. and uh, this might be uh, this might be an efficient option to let the banks know about their weakness or to let the banks figure out that what are the major areas they need to work upon right so coming back to the question here you can see the statement process of identifying the point at which financial institutions business model will become unviable involves the idea of reverse engineering started starting from the end of the risk management process that is why it is called reverse engineering because you are starting from the result right i hope now it is clear to you uh, i think all these things have been already have already been discussed identified identification of a predefined outcome that is failure of the bank might be the point at which 
entity fails. Severe but plausible scenarios. So what is the meaning of these two terms, severe and plausible? Severe means बहुत ही बहुत serious scenario या बहुत ही ऐसे गंभीर scenario जिसमें problem हो सकती है financial institution को. यहाँ पे magnitude is working. That what is the magnitude? What is the intensity? See, COVID से पहले भी बहुत सारे outbreaks हुए हैं in countries, right? There was Ebola, there was many others, but they didn't affect us that much because the magnitude was not high. They were not severe. But COVID was severe, right? To, uh, to, so it means figuring out the intensity of events. Plausible, what is the probability of them happening? Right? Here we are talking about whether they can happen or not. And if they can happen, what is the probability? हो सकता है पचास परसेंट चांस हो कि इवेंट हो सकता है या बहुत ही कम चांस है कि इवेंट हो सकता है फिगरिंग आउट देयर प्रोबेबिलिटीज यू हैव टू वर्क अपॉन दीज थ्री क्वेश्चन वट वुड टेक टू फेल द एंटिटी वट इंडिविजुअल इवेंट और सीक्वेंस ऑफ इवेंट कैन लीड टू दिस फेलियर एंड हाउ कैन यू अवॉइड इट राइट सो दिस कैन बी फिगर आउट बाई आर एस टी दैट इज रिवर्स स्ट्रेस टेस्टिंग राइट मूविंग आई टू दी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर टूडे Okay, question number five. It says that SEBI has recently reduced the application fees payable by individual and corporate investment advisors for grant of a license. So, if Mukesh has to apply currently for a for a, for the registered investment advisor, how much money would he have to pay as application fee? So, you have to tell the money that SEBI is charging individuals uh, as application fee if they want to get a license. Correct option for this question is option B. Option B means two thousand rupees. Guys, it's a very simple factual question. Here you can see individuals if they wanted to register as uh, register as uh, the, uh, registered investment advisor earlier they had to be pay five thousand. Now they will have to pay two thousand. Similarly, for corporates earlier the fees was twenty five thousand. Now they have to pay ten thousand. Now this is about the application fee. Now coming to the registration fee. Earlier individuals had to pay ten thousand. Now it has been reduced to three thousand. Earlier for corporates, for body corporates basically, it was five lakh, and now it has been reduced to fifteen thousand. Right. So this is the change. And why is this fees being cut down in order to support these investment advisors so that more people they registered as investment advisors? What is the benefit of getting them registered? The benefit is if they are registered, they are controlled by the regulators. Their records are present with the regulators. In case they do any bad thing, uh, the regulator can easily catch them. Right? Guys, if you remember, uh, in these sessions we have discussed that how. Um, For investment advisors, the regulators have been getting stricter. They have been trying to separate the advisory and distribution functions of investment advising. Right. So this is one step in same direction. Earlier, they increased the qualifications that are required for becoming a registered investment advisor. So, guys, these were the five questions for today. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you did, then do not forget to hit the like button because I'll be back in next session. With some new information. Till then, you keep watching, keep your studies uh, carrying on, keep your uh, carry on your studies, and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you for being here.